Hello everyone, welcome to Tell Me More. French culture is well known all over the world. The copies of famous French landmarks existed all over the world. The icon of France is Paris. In fact, Paris is the name that pops in our mind when we think about France. So why did the French government decided to copy their own capital? How do you keep a beautiful city as Paris safe during the World War? World War I was unlike any war that the world has seen before. Terrifying new weapons made their debut. The machine guns, tanks, fighter planes, etc. Safe civilians had become new targets for the bombers. August 30, 1914, the day when Germany bombed Paris for the first time from the air. Germany used a two-seater plane to drop four bombs in the city. This type of attack was never seen before. In September 1914, Germans added nighttime attacks to their routine. In 1915, Germany started using Zeppelins. Zeppelins were long ranged aircrafts with a metal frame. They used to be a symbol of German pride during the World War. Germans were the first people to use Zeppelins as a strategic aircrafts. At the beginning of 1917, a wild idea floated into the French military planners. They decided to build a complete replica of Paris just outside the city to fold the German bombers. Ten aeroplanes have no perfect radars, so pilot has to fly purely by sight. And when they believed that they spotted the targets, they released the bombs in the specific area. The plan of construction of fake Paris is called Siam Paris. Siam Paris has three parts. First, the northeast of the city is a train hub. Northwest of the city is built on a river bend. Saini. It could be the city center equipped with monuments. Third would be the industrial zone with factories and other indications of wartime production. Most of the constructions were made with wood, plastic and cloth. Streets are almost the same as the original. They included working street lamps all over the city. Artists were called to paint the fake neighborhoods. They even made a fake train at the train hub. The government worked hard to bring the replica of Paris but the most important part was the lightning. As Germans increased their raids at night to avoid the anti-craft missiles that were fired by the French to stop the German flights, the lights of the city acted as a guide for the German pilots to release their bombs. So, Ferdinand Jacobis is an electrical engineer and an Italian. He was called by the government to light up the fake city. His idea was to completely black out the city of Paris covering the city under the blanket of darkness so that they could save it from the bombers. Jacobis used several techniques to replicate the light that comes from the glass of the building. He somehow used the techniques to light up the fake city. He even used the lighting to illuminate the light given from the interior of a moving train. Even the smoke produced from the working furnaces is real. Several women worked in the fake factories and also in the engine of the train to produce the smoke and work with the furnaces. The lightning crew would test the efficiency of their work by observing from the Eiffel Tower to make sure they have done everything right. Finally, the French were successful to fool the German pilots and save the city. The Germans went on to bomb the British cities after bombing the Sham Paris. The German bombing campaign came to an end in September 1918. The mock factories were dismantled shortly. By the beginning of 1920, a little remind of the project had. Though this fascinating idea never really got much to the drawing boards, the design of Fernand Jacobizi inspired the similar ambitions schemes in the United States during the Second World War. He himself went on to become one of the father of modern illuminated advertising billboards. One of his famous projects was Citron logo on the Eiffel Tower. 